Okay, so good afternoon, good morning, good evening, everybody. So we're um, today holding this uh, AFI Winter Bootcamp 2024. Um, it's a, a thank you for uh, taking the time uh, to look at our uh, offering. So my name is uh, Mikel Noguer. I'm the CEO of uh, Artificial Intelligence Finance Institute, and I'll be guiding you through uh, what is, uh, you know, our bootcamp uh, is taking place from the 5th uh, to uh, the 16th uh, February uh, 2024. This is going to be our uh, uh, 11th, right, uh, bootcamp. So uh, we found it uh, a while ago, so five years ago. Uh, we started um, the Artificial Intelligence Finance Institute along with uh, uh, Michael Weinberg and, and, and some other, so to speak, pioneers of uh, AI in finance. Five years ago, uh, our mission was and still is uh, to be the world's leading educator in the application of artificial intelligence to investment management, capital markets, and risk. So overall, the idea is to uh, some sort of be uh, training uh, and, and showing uh, uh, obviously the theory and the practice, so the fundamentals and, and, and the implementation of um, AI machine learning uh, technologies in uh, 2024 uh, finance. And the way we wanted to do that, and the way we do that is by uh, some sort of having in our faculty uh, some uh, of the best professionals and practitioners in the world, um, because uh, it is our belief, obviously, that, that, that if you want to be successful uh, with our offerings, and if the Institute wants to be successful, we have to have uh, or we aim to have the best professionals in the area that can uh, some sort of, again, uh, show in-depth uh, and, and teach in-depth educational programs uh, geared towards investment professionals, uh, finance professionals, computer science professionals that want to that wanna break uh, into finance, a finance that is becoming more and more computational, right? So when we started this, again, in 2018, so things were... Like, okay, yes, yeah, some of these technologies are useful. Some of these technologies might be changing finance. We have to say that after five years, this is, uh, you know, obviously humbly, but this is exactly what happened, right? So technologies like deep learning, technologies like reinforcement learning are being used more and more. And certainly natural language processing is something that uh, as we speak is taking over the world not only the finance world, but uh, I would say uh, society and 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 all industries, right? So um, uh, in order to do that, we have invited for our bootcamp uh, from the fifth to the sixteenth, right? The world-leading academics and practitioners, so people that it's recognizable in the industry as as leaders. Uh, like uh, Marcus Lopez or Matthew Dixon, um, Gordon Ritter, Peter Combs. So I'm going to be sp I'm going to be speaking about uh, again who's in our faculty, but uh, uh, and and also uh, one uh, one another uh, thing that you will see um, because I'm going to go through the syllabus, so to speak, is that we take a lot of um, we take a lot of interest and we invest a lot of time into. Uh, some sort of uh, computer science uh, training in the sense of code is an essential part. And, and obviously 10 days, it's a lot of time, but it's not a lot of time. But our idea is to give you an idea. And, and what we've done in previous cohorts is give uh, a bunch of very interesting notebook materials in Python, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Right, so obviously this is a, a moving a moving target, so to speak, and investing a lot of time in uh, in so to speak developing uh, and and coding 
sessions. So we have the marvelous Nicole, uh, Nicole Konigsten, who's done a terrific job, uh, some sort of training, I would say, a new generation of quants, uh, or, or uh, the ones that we are in the industry for, for many years, so we also had to recycle, so to speak. Right. So the idea is to learn mathematical and statistical theories behind more the quantitative finance, artificial intelligence modeling. Right. So uh, also, right, uh, a, a quantitative finance uh, is being, so to speak, taken over by a new technologies, option pricing, uh, portfolio management, risk management with generative models, uh, with transformers. Uh, with time series models, with factor models, with causal investing. So we're, we're witnessing something that I think it uh, has no precedent in the history of finance, in the history of quantitative finance, which is we have a, a, a new set of tools that, um, that have to be uh, in, uh, in the tool set of any uh, some sort of quantitative finance professional uh, in 2024. Right. So the idea is, is to show how to use this new way for computer driven tools and technologies that transform investment management, risk management and capital markets. So just a couple of words on who am I? So I'm the co-founder, again, along with Michael Weinberg, uh, who's in the board um, and the chief executive officer. And I have more than 30 uh, years experience in different areas. Of finance, I've been in 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 I've I've been uh, in banking for for twenty years, asset management, and then uh, in two thousand and ten uh, I got my PhD and I started some sort of uh, an academic career, right, um, teaching uh, at NYU Quran, NYU Tandon, Columbia University, Imperial College, London Business School. Isadi and some some so some of the most prestigious uh, universities uh, in the planet. Uh, some sort of been I had uh, I've had uh, some of the tremendous honor uh, to be teaching for them uh, again, uh, trying to uh, some sort of again train a new generation of quants, a new generation of finance professionals who's able to uh, you know use the most advanced financial data science technologies, but at the same time be very humble at how they use them. I also serve in the board of uh, Financial Data Professionals Institute in the CFA New York Quant Investing Group uh, and, 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 and uh, also been working for uh, UBS in Switzerland, right? And uh, in Anbank for, for 10 years and I started my career at KPMG, right? I also am teaching for the CQF, Certificate of Quantitative Finance. So, so I think, again, that, that uh, I, I, I am trying to right, be up to speed and, and, and in the main developments, also trying to lead them. Uh, we, we, we invest a lot of time, uh, all the faculty members uh, for their organizations, for their universities, right, to write research and disseminate uh, all we find out, all we know uh, about uh, the use of these technologies. As I said, so we have, uh, uh, I think, a, 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 a ex extremely interesting and, 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 and we take uh, a lot of interest and, 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 um, and pains into obviously some sort of hiring and, and, and involving in our institute uh, the best professionals or the best academics. And obviously we have a bunch of one of the year um, professors, Peter Colm, right? Who's director of the Mathematics in Finance uh, program at the Quran Institute of Mathematical Finances in New York University. Um, he has a PhD in mathematics from Yale in applied mathematics for the uh, RIT. Uh, in Sweden, in, Su in in Zurich, so Peter is is uh, an, an an obviously extremely accomplished quant and academic. Um, everybody, I guess, in the audience knows about an, another one of the the leading figures in quantitative finance in 2024, who's Martin Dixon, who's a British applied mathematician, uh, professor of applied maths at Illinois Tech, right. 
Uh, so he recently changed, right? So he's uh, not anymore at Illinois Tech. He's now uh, he's now leading uh, a fintech company very successfully. Uh, and uh, I'm sure everybody in the audience knows he's the author of, of one of the reference books uh, when it comes to financial machine learning in 2024. So Matthew Dixon, along with Igor Halperin and, and Paul Bilokon wrote in 2020, some sort of one of, one of the, the most, in, most interesting uh, references uh, for financial machine learning um, 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 as we speak, right? Um, we also have, right, I'm not speaking in any order or, or that, but obviously uh, two other uh, giants uh, of financial machine learning involved. Uh, Gordon Reeder, who uh, has PhD in mathematical physics at Harvard University in 2007, right? Uh, he teaches in almost every uh, of the th nation MFE programs, Baruch, NYU, Chicago, and so on. So Gordon is, is certainly uh, one of the accomplished or the most accomplished quants uh, uh, in Wall Street. Uh, and also, I, I highly recommend reading his research, right? Um, uh, another, you know, member of our faculty is Marcos Lopez de Prado, who's, uh, who's uh, obviously uh, one of the leading figures on, on quantitative finance, uh, financial machine learning 2024. 20, He's also been uh, quant of the year. Uh, I don't know if it was, I don't remember, it was 2019, 2018. Anyway, so I'm sure, I'm, 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 and, and this, the author of, uh, you know, reference books on financial machine learning, right? Very active uh, researcher is now leading uh, the Abu Dhabi Investment Authority quant investing uh, effort, right? And we're very happy to, to continue to have uh, his immensely valuable uh, collaboration. Um, other collaborators, right, are Stefan Janssen, I'm sure uh, also uh, many of you in the audience know he's the author of or extremely interesting uh, reference who's the machine learning in trading book. Uh, Stefan Janssen has been advising Fortune 500 companies, consulting some of them, and, and, and again, he's been writing uh, some of the most interesting books uh, uh, that, that we use uh, as a reference, and you'll see he's, he's teaching several lectures, right? We have the immense privilege uh, to have Stefan uh, in our faculty. Nicole Konigsten is a distinguished data scientist, a quantitative researcher, right? He's uh, uh, the head of, of, of quantitative research at one crypto fund as we speak. So she's been, she's the author Right, she's getting these things are getting outdated because our our, our faculty members are so active. So Nicole Conniston certain is been uh, recently also very busy. We are all very busy writing books and research. She's been uh, very busy writing a book on transformers. So if some of you is interested in the uh, nuts and bolts of of transformers uh, in general. And, and, and also, again, uh, very focused on implementation aspects. So Nicole Konigsen wrote a fantastic book uh, with, with Manning, right, uh, about transformers that I, I really, uh, uh, I really, she also has published a book on math for machine learning. And we have uh, Nicole Konigsen as, as uh, our, some sort of uh, code uh, instructor. Okay, so also, uh, well, I'll, I'll be showing now, I'm, I'm sure, again, um, probably the audience know even better than, than I personally do, uh, some of the in-depth, uh, some sort of num large number of papers that our faculty members have been reading, right? Ourselves, we've been trying to uh, push uh, and, and research on the different domains uh, of quantitative finance, we've wrote uh, very successful, so to speak, equity machine learning factor models that I wrote with Vincent Zunekain from Abu Dhabi Investment Authority. Uh, Vincent Zunekain, for the ones who don't know, it's, uh, I, I would say, one of the emerging leading figures on, on factor modeling. 
We wrote a paper a while ago about deep learning for equity time series prediction. Uh, you know, we were some of the first ones who start talking about LSTMs back then in, in, in 2018. Some people said, well, this is not a this is not the right way to do, to do time series. And I think also here, um, somehow things have been indicated us. I'm not saying that they can be used in all contexts, but certainly deep learning for time series is something everybody uh, has to uh, learn, test, uh, and so on. Finance is a very empirical science, right? Everything that we think might be useful needs to be thoroughly tested, right? You need to obviously account for non-stationarity uh, and, and all that kind of stuff. So this is also something, again, that, that we take a lot of uh, time um, to somehow uh, convey uh, in our bootcamp the, the, need for, uh, the need for a thorough testing, uh, the need for historical uh, testing, not only historical testing, but also using, using generative time series models and all that kind of stuff. Deep learning is also part of the, 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 the transformation that, that finance. So we have a couple of days devoted to deep learning, excuse me, to re reinforcement learning, right? Uh, taught by Matthew Dixon uh, and others. We also wrote a paper about generative models time series. So the idea of instead of modeling P of uh, Y condition to X, which is what we typically do in supervised learning. So the idea, can I model P of X? So the joint probability distribution of whatever problem I am trying to solve, time series, or even economy, or other books, uh, or factor models, right? So this is, this is something that, uh, well, uh, uh, Five years ago, we weren't that excited with, with self-supervised learning or unsupervised. We were saying, okay, you can tweak the covariance matrix. Certainly, you can do RMT, random matrix theory. So you can you know, do quite a lot of things to massage the, the, the covariance matrix, which is an essential ingredient for portfolio management problems. But uh, we are now right, also... Um, Following a bit the example of what has happened uh, in other domains and language, so the, the, the use of, uh, of, again, machines, models that learn the joint probability distribution uh, of X's, where it can be very useful to then do prediction, to then do uh, one shot, two shots, and so on, right? Okay, and obviously, right, and I haven't used Right, there were LMMs, so it's 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 uh, 149, and still haven't used the word LMMs, right? But we certainly see, we'll see lots of a uh, lot of uh, training and applications of large language models uh, in finance. Just co to continue quickly, so we also have been writing papers about obviously the fact that it's very easy to 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 uh, uh, to overfeed. In finance, very fit to, it's very easy to find very good predictions in paper, right? In the training set, and 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 obviously things aren't that easy in the test set. Things are that that um, that is in the validation set. So we take a lot of uh, right uh, pains too into some sort of trying to instill right this idea that finance it's a specific domain in which you know. Training set might not contain all the, you know, obviously future scenarios, right? Might not contain enough, for example, black swans and all that kind of stuff. So, and obviously Marcos has written extensively about backtesting. So uh, again, we need to invest a lot of time into uh, investigating not only the past, which is supposed that, which we suppose all quants do, right? So you do a lot of back testing and you say, oh, things work well in the back testing, but obviously work is not done there, right? Because back testing is not enough, historical performance, so to speak, is not enough. It's very easy to get, but we need much more uh, insights and, and robustness in our trading strategies you know, restrategies, strategies, portfolio management strategies, and so on and so forth. Okay, so this uh, we also wrote 
an interesting paper. So we'll have Julian Antolin uh, also talking about a, a, an interesting paper who wrote about physics informed neural networks. Said the idea of can we use uh, neural networks to solve PDs, partial differential equations? The answer is in many occasions, yes, we can. So we can use uh, the whole technology of neural networks to, to do to some sort of, in addition to a loss function at a PDE, like for example, Blackshaw's PDE, and then ask the neural networks, can you look at the data? Can you need, can you solve these, right? Uh, can you minimize the loss function, but also adapt it to this PDE? The answer is, uh, in many occasions, that is possible. I'm not saying you should do that all the time, when you have a nice solution for your PD, obviously you don't need neural networks, right? So this is also something that we'll see in the, uh, we are not saying everything in finance needs to be non-parametric. We're just saying that uh, sometimes non-parametric technologies is the only thing uh, that uh, is the only thing that can work or that will work, right? And certainly the, the, the success of deep learning technologies Right, is telling us there's something essential in how these models are, are able to capture joint probability distributions in more than 50 dimensions. Right, we certainly have not a lot of tools to investigate. Right, we certainly don't have a lot of data, but certainly is really impressive on how uh, deep learning technologies are able. Right to model these apparently unsolvable problems. It has these apparently two highly dimensional problems. So this is another opportunity for quant researchers, you know, to be able to be at least able to investigate high dimensional problems that in the past, uh, you know, we didn't have tools pre deep learning and so on. I'm not I'm not saying this solve all the problems, right? But I'm saying this is an additional tool that is worth investigating. Okay, and then, uh, you know, we have been reading extensively about NLP. So natural language processing is something that uh, started, we started doing NLP back in 2018 when things were like TF-IDF and frequency stuff, right? So pre-deep learning, where well, obviously transformers were born just that year, right? And we started all right uh, in, in uh, some, sort of, some sort of doing uh, using more deep learning with BERT models right um, we wrote a paper called Phineas financial embedding analysis sentiment which is uh, right a paper that uses sentence BERT so instead of word embeddings you do sentence embeddings to do analysis of sentiment obviously things have also evolved big time there right uh, because LMMs came a year ago and, uh, and are also uh, a new paradigm, so to speak. So quant researchers, uh, fundamental managers, finance risk people, everybody is investigating as we speak, what are the, the advantages of using large language models uh, in the day-to-day -day job, which is, I think, something that we've all incorporated Right, any and all, but also how these models can can be used uh, in other some sort of large case applications. Right, so we will do uh, quite a lot of work. Right, uh, we're very positive on LMMs in finance, but uh, some we're working with some people in the audience, and we have to say that there's a, a significant amount of work uh, that needs to be put uh, in using LMMs. Right, so that's why I wrote a paper about evaluation. So large language models are hard to evaluate, right? But uh, if you don't want to lose your job quickly, right? Certainly, we 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 recommend uh, evaluating them thoroughly uh, in regards to the task. And I have a paper that will be soon out about economy, financial markets, are complex systems, and so on. So, right. Okay, about the books, right? So we have the again the the privilege and the immense pleasure to have the authors of all these books, right? Uh, you know, uh, either teaching or giving keynotes. So as I said, Matthew Dixon uh, is a professor. Igor Halpern will be delivering a, a reinforcement learning talk, 
right? Tony Guida is also going to talk us about Rocco. Tony Guida and, and, and I, well, I was the author of the 13th chapter of the Big Data Machine Learning Quantitative Investment Book, was one of the, I would say, pioneers of, of uh, also of this. So we will show in this book a, a bunch of interesting applications. Certainly, right, the literature, uh, Marcos Lopez de Prado, Professor Lopez de Prado, um, from Cornell, so has done a tremendous contribution uh, for financial machine learning, one finance, and so on, disseminating extremely good research, extremely good insights, and uh, and uh, Marcos is obviously a highly accomplished uh, practitioner. As I said, we also have Stefan Johnson. I could also hear right show. Uh, right, the books of the Nicole Konigsten and 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 we ourselves, along with Daniel Block and David Pacheco, are finishing uh, a book on artificial intelligence and finance, who will soon be out. Right, but I cannot say more about that. Obviously, we use some of the references on this, which is the hands-on machine learning with Scikit Learn, uh, Cares and TensorFlow. Everybody. Uh, that has tried, is trying to implement uh, AI machine learning models know about this, uh, some sort of extraordinary, uh, extremely good book from Aurel and Geron. Obviously it's not a finance book, uh, but certainly uh, is an extremely good reference. Okay, so let me talk a bit about, about the, um, about the syllabus in depth, right? So, so uh, we have, I'll try to do that in 15 minutes and then give some space for questions, right? But the idea is, right? So we have, um, uh, it's, uh, we we're offering uh, an online bootcamp from the 5th February, right? Monday at 9 a.m. EST, New York time. So please uh, consider this, right? When, uh, when some sort of making space, so it's EST time, New York time. So this is 3 p.m. Uh, European time and so on, right? Um, about the logistics, we also have to say that uh, every session Will be, are is recorded and is available two hours after every session. So, right. So, in at four p.m. EST, the fifth February, you'll have access to the recordings of the first day. Right. So it is. Uh, so as education is evolving, so more and more people is taking the bootcamp. Uh, you know, and maybe it's not able to attend uh, the uh, the streamlined uh, right um, sessions, uh, but certainly again you have uh, access to the the, the materials, and uh, every day before right uh, the lecture, uh, the code, the slides, and the recordings. Right, and we use a platform called Piazza. So the, it's a platform that is used by universities. It's a platform where you have all the uh, all the notebooks, all the slides, and in which delegates can communicate, can ask questions, and so on. Obviously, during the the live sessions, uh, questions are welcome. So so you can stop us and 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 ask questions right during or after the lectures. And so on. So we start. So over the years, we've made significant changes in in the content of our bootcamp, right? So we every I was discussing yesterday. So we typically somehow are changing every six months. I would say half of the slides, so to speak, because there are new models, there there are new uh, there are new uh, programming languages. Uh, there's new research. Uh, that so it's a very 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 dynamic space right so some people is taking the bootcamp has taken the bootcamp several times because it's a it's a really nice nice way some sort of to be updated every year right so we'll start the 5th of february 9 a.m 12 p.m I'll, I'll be covering the main aspects of artificial intelligence in finance 
right? There are lots of modeling aspects that, uh, that are important, right, in, in finance, right? I always, I used to say to, to, to our researchers and practitioners, right, that, that our, our job is not only to show, you know, these examples in which you have a data set, in which you can do some sort of feature engineering and so on and so forth, but also we try to some sort of infuse uh, the necessary knowledge when data is very sparse, right, when data is incomplete, and, and so on and so forth. There are lots of subtasks that need to be performed by quantitative finance experts um, these days in order to do their jobs, right? So it's not only about only pricing an option, but there's a lot of things. There's, there's, a, there's a volatility surface that, that, that some sort of need to estimate. Um, if I do portfolio management, I need to obviously, uh, you know, compute the expected returns of 500 stocks, right? And also covariance metrics, right? So we provide um, several ways to do that. Okay, so I, I'll be discussing the first day, the, the main aspects uh, of this. We'll also have William Kelly from the Kaya Institute. William is also been, uh, you know, collaborating with us, right? William is also leading the Financial Data Professionals Institute, uh, which is another uh, option to learn these things. And we'll have uh, some sort of Julian Antolin, who's going to talk us about this paper we wrote about physics informed neural networks. Uh, Julian is a physics uh, PhD who's now at Arizona, previously at point 72. Okay, the second day we start, uh, you know, I start with, you know, pretty much all, all supervised learning except deep learning, right? So uh, we've also, again, we've changed these in the sense that at the beginning, when we started in 2018, in 2018, so just a few people knew what super vector machines are. And now I would say uh, almost everybody knows what SBMs are or XGBoost. The beginning was like, uh, okay, okay, that's a technology that beats all the uh, Kaggle competition, that wins all the Kaggle competition. You should know about that. And obviously uh, we'll have an extensive coverage of trees, uh, which are um, an, an XGBoost, AdaBoost, uh, CatBoost, and all the, all the possible boosts of trees, uh, which are some sort of very uh, interesting tools for cross-sectional data sets as we speak. So it's not only all deep learning, it's not only, it's not all reinforcement learning, so, but you still need to obviously be solving problems uh, in lots of uh, cross-sectional data sets in which trees and different flavors of trees, even random forests uh, can do an excellent job, especially uh, when data, when when you just don't have lots of data, so right, so data sparsity and, and so on. As I said before, this is something that will be discussed thoroughly, right? Uh, the obviously the detractors of ML AI and saying, okay, there are many areas in which you just don't have lots of data, and that's true, right? So, so many areas of finance you just don't have big data, but you have small data, right? So that's why uh, we will uh, be doing a lot on, on generative models, but not elements, but generative models like GANs, generative adversarial networks, or BAEs, variation autoencoders, conditional variation autoencoders, and this kind of stuff, right? Okay, also the second day we start with a two hour coding sessions. So Nicole's coin extent sessions are, uh, we've had, a tremendously good feedback. Nicole Connickson is extremely accomplished, not only researcher practitioners, but she's a lovely instructor. So she does a marvelous job on writing very clear code, explaining the code, uh, I would say from the essentials to the most uh, sophisticated NLP models, um, deep learning models, right? So, okay, about, uh, this idea of about uh, the the extreme importance of of trees, uh, right? So Yashuin Zhang, right, uh, is going to give us, uh, and also Tony Guida uh, are going to talk us about uh, trees, factor models, 
right? Trees and, and also time series models, right? So again, uh, uh, when we talk about AI, it's not all only about deep, deep neural networks, which is obviously a big part of it. But we do think that, uh, again, trees are extremely useful, e easy to implement, extremely useful, and uh, will we'll invest quite an interesting amount of time uh, on, on uh, understanding how we can use trees uh, and also ensembles, right? Other boost, G boost, random forests, and so on. Tony Guida has also been, uh, right, uh, collaborating with us since day one, uh, right? He wrote a, a fantastic book called Machine Learning for Factor Models, which I highly recommend, right? Uh, okay, and we will see, we will cover some of the materials in the bootcamp. Uh, we'll have also Arpit Narayan, right? Arpit Narayan, who's, who's the head of uh, financial engineering for the MathWorks, right? Is going to talk us about something extremely important, right? So nobody has still. Um, so we haven't opened the Q and A, but obviously somebody could could have raised the boys and say, okay. Professor, you're talking a lot about all these models. These models, you know, are extremely, typically highly dimensional, lots of parameters. Can we actually uh, understand them, explain them? So explainable AI is something extremely important. Also, uh, obviously in finance, regulators want us to be able to explain what's going on, to be able to, be able to say why the model is not, uh, is not recommending us to give credit, a specific corporation of a person, and so on and so forth, right? So RP9 is going to do, we'll have uh, also the 7th of February, right? Uh, you know, one of the, I would say, living giants in finance, uh, right? Robert Lederman uh, needs, needs no introduction, but obviously Robert is uh, the uh, co-author of the Black Lederman model, along with one of the you know legendary uh, figures in finance, who's Fisher Black, right? So F Black and uh, uh, so uh, so Black uh, Lederman uh, is uh, one of the most interesting. And these days, uh, uh, Robert Lederman, in addition to to this uh, his work at Kepos Capital. Right, he's also working for the uh, CFTC on 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 things, on a very important aspect for which is climate change and how can we use uh, some of the finance knowledge uh, for uh, you know dealing with a very very important problem for humanity, which is climate change. Okay, we will continue with uh, you know unsupervised learning. As I said in the beginning, unsupervised learning is 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 pro is is one of the surprises, right of uh, ML in finance in the sense and 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 overall I would say so this idea that that unsupervised learning that started like being a factor a matrix factorization issue so we pick the covariance metrics we do SBD or we do uh, or obviously a PCA decomposition all that kind of stuff right and now we're evolving we still obviously using unsupervised learning that way but uh, we are now all saying, okay, variation, variational autoencoders invented by Wigman and and um, and uh, well and the, the uh, and Welling uh, uh, ten years ago uh, can be extremely useful to build P of X uh, kind of models. So the joint probability distribution of uh, X's the data set, so to speak, right? We'll continue uh, with Nicole Konigstein and then we'll have, uh, you know, a masterful session by uh, a keynote by uh, Peracom. Okay, the day fifth is 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 one of, well, all, all days are, are extremely interesting, but obviously day five is one of my favorites, right? Because we, still, we do leap, deep learning, right? Again, not everybody, in finance is, is uh, convinced about using deep learning, but there, there are obviously a, a bunch of uh, deep learning can be used in finance, obviously in high frequency, it can be used for options. Uh, it, can, it, it is heavily used in NLP and Francois Charton from Meta AI. Uh, so it, it's, it's gonna talk us about deep learning for mathematics, right? So even before elements, Francois was investigating the idea of using transformers to solve uh, ordinary differential equations, right? 
uh, we also show the first day that our neural networks can, uh, or vanilla neural networks can also be used to, to solve PDs, right? If you have enough data and so on, we'll have Marcos Lopez de Prado and we'll have Stefan Janssen, uh, who's going to uh, sort of give us three hours of deep learning right uh, and 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 especially interesting is the section in which uh, in which stefan jansen talks us about you know deep learning for asset pricing deep learning for trading right so also factor models are being impacted by uh, ml right and and as we if you can if you read our papers you will say you'll say okay so you, they have to be used with extreme care right of course, this is finance. All models should be used with extreme care. But um, so this will conclude the first week, right? So again, it's a two week online, right? Um, it's the weekend is free, right? And uh, Monday, we start with another very interesting day. We have with Matthew Dixon from Illinois Tech, right? One of the quants of the year recent quants of the year, author of the, the N, again, uh, an extremely, extremely, uh, you know, accomplished instructor who's able to convey, you know, you know, concepts, very, you know, some sort of advanced concepts, uh, LSTM, recurrent neural networks, alpha, recurrent neural networks, right, and so on, right? Also, with a lot of mathematical depth, which sometimes is missing, right? So we take a lot of uh, also time in the bootcamp to try to instill, show a train on the mathematical aspects of them. So this is just not only a coding bootcamp, but also the mathematics that we know so far about LSTMs, about RNNs, uh, about, about trees, about transformers, we'll try to show Right, so obviously mathematicians are, and we are, some sort of trying to to some sort of cope uh, with the idea. Oh, this is extremely useful for highly dimensional, right, uh, modeling problems. Right, even if data is not huge, data has to be you know enough. But even in 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 context, in you have I don't know two hundred variables that you would need. Uh, in these highly dimensional spaces, you you would need just huge data sets. But even if the data set is not huge, deep learning is, is doing quite a reasonable good job, right? Uh, in these data sets. So Matthew Dixon is going to talk us about why uh, why uh, mathematics uh, and the mathematics of some of them. Okay. Then we also have a very interesting training session about generative finance. So David Pacheco Atnar. Uh, right, who wrote with me a, a, a very interesting paper is going to talk us about, I think, one of the most interesting and emerging areas uh, in, in quantitative finance. And I'm not talking about elements. So he is more talking about, about uh, right, um, how can you build, right, generative uh, models for uh, things like time series, right? Uh, a multivariate time series, univariate time series, and so on, right? So learning the probability distribution of the axis, right, uh, gives you uh, some sort of uh, uh, potentially a very good tool to then uh, do prediction with this, to maybe do one-shot tasks, uh, to do uh, risk scenarios, and so on and so forth. Uh, uh, on the 13th, the seventh day, we'll have Matthew Dixon talking about one of the, the, the also emerging and in my view most interesting areas of finance uh, in the future with reinforcement learning. So this idea of we have rewards, we have uh, state spaces, we build um, a Markov decision process, right? Uh, potentially a partially observable Markov decision processes process and I have to say, we have to say that obviously finance is full of problems that can be framed as reinforcement learning problems because it's fine, finance is full of, uh, uh, let, let's say, say, sequential decision making or temporal decision making problems, uh, which is obviously one of the main uses of reinforcement learning, right? Okay. 
So we'll discuss the taxonomy, tabular learning, the Bellman equations, Q learning, and all that stuff. So also reinforcement learning, it's being used uh, extensively in a, in, in, in a somehow unexpected setting, which is language models. So the way language models are trained and improved is by using reinforcement learning with human feedback, right? Very soon it's gonna be reinforcement learning with AI feedback. But the idea is we feed uh, rewards, we feed human rewards, and then reinforcement learning algorithms learn Right. So we'll discuss in depth so how we can frame problems, how we can solve um, problems, some of some of the solution of these problems again will will lead us to deep reinforcement learning, which we use neural networks to perform some of these tasks. Okay, we'll also have a, you know another coding session with Nicole Konigsten, and then the eight. Uh, right, we have David Pacheco Adnar, who's wrote uh, 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 an exceptional uh, uh, master thesis talking about distributional enforcement learning, which is somehow can I build a priority distribution of rewards or outcomes and so on. So, David Pacheco is going to talk us about uh, how can we effectively train models to do deep R to the DRL, which is not deep reinforcement learning, but distributional reinforcement learning, which is a reasonable, which is a, I would say an emerging, right, area, even for reinforcement learners. We'll have also the invaluable, uh, uh, the invaluable contribution of Gordon Reader, who started uh, discussing and researching or enforcement learning problems back in 2019 and 18, right? Okay, so, um, okay. Now, day nine, uh, it's gonna be fully devoted to uh, LMMs and natural language processing, right? Okay, so we've been putting a lot of thought about how we didn't need to train NLP, right? And how we need to train LMMs, right? And we came to the conclusion, right, that we're not jumping straight to LMMs, right? We want to give uh, some sort of the fundamentals of what I call the, well, uh, I don't want to use, you know, words war, old or traditional, but certainly, you know, certainly things like TF-IDF frequency methods is, is going to be needed 2024, 2025, right? For reasons that you will learn at the bootcamp, LMMs are not uh, doing some of the tasks at the precision that we need, right? Even if LMMs are extremely accomplished in, in, in right, for, for some tasks are not good enough. So we need to some sort of hybridize uh, NLP models, right? We'd also need to combine with symbolic models and so on, right? So we'll spend the whole day on part of the day 10 talking about LMMs and NLP, right? And, uh, you know, I think I, I don't have, you know, I think this is one of the most important areas in finance as we speak, everybody from quant funds to fundamental funds, right, to, to banks, uh, risk managers are trying to say, how can, I, how can I use LMMs, right? How can I best use them, right? And uh, if you ask me, uh, in the 16th January 2024, and some of my collaborators and some of the papers that have been written, elements can be extremely useful. Elements need, need quite a lot of tweaking and quite a lot of work um, to make them uh, precise enough, right, to do some of the tasks that we'll be asking uh, to perform, right? And uh, RP9, right, from, from uh, MathWorks, also, is going to talk us about LMMs in finance. Um, we'll also have another session with Bashkarit Sarma, who's on Black, uh, who's uh, who's right now in BlackRock, right? Who's going to talk us about LMMs in investment management? So here, the idea is right that um, depending on the user cases, right? So there's a lot of user cases of LMMs from from helping you to write code. To helping you debug, from 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 the helping you summarize, for helping you to stock pick, for helping you to credit to credit modeling. 
helping you to do factor modeling, writing code, uh, writing LaTeX. Uh, so there's a lot of, of things, right? Uh, as I mentioned before, in, for, in many tasks, right? Elements are not precise enough. They're still uh, lagging behind in things like understanding tables, uh, understanding numbers, uh, grounding, and so on and so forth. Again, we're big fans of LMMs. LMMs need a significant amount of work uh, to uh, make them, uh, you know, um, precise enough uh, for some of the tasks, right? Okay. Um, then on day 10, right? So the, 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 I'll, I'll give a talk talking about the different aspects, how we see, uh, how we see the different aspects of quantitative finance and finance uh, in February, 2024. Uh, again, we think that uh, there's a tremendous, uh, you know, uh, rate of change in time series, in factor models, in risk modeling, in uh, in in I don't know in 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 fat tails uh, estimation, in option pricing, uh, hatching, uh, what else? Um, volatility surfaces, right? Uh, factor models, uh, ex, uh, causal AI, right? And causal modeling, which is obviously one of the things that is it's it's being discussed as we speak. Everybody. Right, Marcos uh, was a proponent of Marcos Lopez said we need to do a much better job uh, trying to understand the causality in our factor models. I agree with him. It's obviously a hot topic. It's a difficult topic. How to how we can make our models causal? So it's something that we're all trying to investigate and so on and so forth. So there's a lot of again, right? Open air as of debate. Right, we'll have Asir Gutierrez talking us. Um, who's now at Walmart and pro was probably was be previously at, at uh, Barcelona Supercomputing Center. Uh, we wrote a paper with him, right, um, on Phineas, right, the sentiment model. We have Richard Rothenberg from Global AI talking us about uh, also NLP and uh, Igor Halperin, uh, one of the quants of the year, and, and also, you know, avid researcher. Is going to uh, some sort of talk us about and conclude uh, talking out. Uh, so this is we oftentimes uh, add uh, some surprises in the bootcamp. So you can expect maybe also other speakers, right? Uh, during these days, again, this is a very dynamic. When we see the opportunity to bring somebody who's talking about a specific topic that can be of interest. We obviously invite her or him uh, to our bootcamp. And maybe just a couple of minutes talking about something that it's important, which is how we evaluate, right? So uh, in principle, you know, bootcamp takes place from the 5th February to the 16th, 10 very intensive days. Not the, obviously the weekend is free, right? So no, um, but we will be available for questions or remarks and so on. And then we have a theory exam so with open boot the 9th of July this year, right? And, and it's uh, some sort of 10 questions, open books exam online that you have to complete in three hours, right? In which you show us that uh, without external help, so to speak, you're able to talk about algorithms, Right. I don't know what's an SBM, super vector machine, or what's a tr or XGBoost, or what is a recurrent neural networks, uh, what is grid search, and so on. So some so a little bit of the theory, right? Um, okay, and then we, you will show us that you you've understood and and being able to show to code uh, with an AI finance project. There has to be the lead with the 7th of October, 2024. You have two years to complete that, right? And this is how we are evaluating, uh, you know, and if you successfully, uh, you know, uh, pass the two steps, uh, I have to say that the success rate of people that took it, it's pretty high in the sense that, 
you know, uh, obviously because again, we have brilliant, very smart delegates who take the boot camp, right? Very accomplished quants or or very you know young talented people uh, who's able to understand reasonably well the main uh, theory aspects, uh, but also are able to some sort of do a reasonable you know implementations in PyTorch, Python, and so on. Python is the language we use. I think I, I mentioned before, you know, some people still is using R. We can accept R things, right? But the main idea is, is I'm sure everybody will agree that Python is somehow might not be the best speak, but this is, you know, the standardly used uh, language and PyTorch more than TensorFlow and so on and so forth, right? So this is the... Okay, so it's been speaking for 55 minutes and then we can, I think we can now obviously, again, you can send us your questions, right? You can ask questions uh, in LinkedIn uh, to us, to, to, to me directly, right? But obviously, you know, you're, you're welcome to ask questions now, right? about content, about, you can find the financials, right? And the economics in uh, of the bootcamp in our brochure. If somebody, you know, is, is in a special circumstance, right? Uh, we can help, we can help students, uh, we can help PhD students uh, and so on. We can help minorities, yes. So if you're PhD students, I encourage you to send us an email, right? And we're happy to, to um, uh, provide you with a scholarship, right? And uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you will send the recording, right? Um, the exam theory is written, yes. Okay, you shouldn't, you shouldn't be somehow terrified, you know, uh, about, right? You shouldn't be terrified about the exam, right? You don't need to be a PhD in mathematics, right? Or PhD in statistics or in computer science, but certainly you need to be able to explain, I don't know, in mathematical terms, what's an RNA, what's an RNA, or, What's a, what's a tree, what's a super vector machine? Again, you don't need to make proofs or so on, but you need to, to show us that you have some sort of the mathematical understanding, right? Also, uh, you know, the qualitative understanding, right? Of, uh, you know, I don't know, when we do feature engineering or when we do, we use signatures, right? Oh yeah, that's a very good question, right? Yeah, no, we try to show you, we try to show, uh, you know, uh, all applications in the sense that Matthew is going to show you high frequency. Uh, Peter is going to show you high frequency. There's also, you know, you know, medium frequency, like, uh, like asked allocation implementations or factor models, which we, you know that have some sort of much low, much lower frequency, so to speak, right? So the idea is after the bootcamp, you you have seen high frequency, you have you you see portfolio management problems that are maybe daily, or factor models that are maybe monthly, right? All these different areas have different some sort of challenges when it comes to. Uh, generating data sets when it's come when it comes to uh, using deep neural networks or using uh, or using trees uh, or using you know uh, I don't know SBMs or 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 even a logistic regression right the AM finance project right can be you know uh, can be in in one of these areas so typically. Uh, our students, some or excuse me, our delegates are are uh, doing things like uh, we've had credit modeling, we've had NLP, we have reinforcement learning in in, in different domains, right? Uh, we're not asking to produce 
some sort of a, a, a data a, a, a model that requires lots of credits, but 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 um, so that you some sort of uh, are able to yes we we yes please uh, everybody from everybody from developing countries. We also we also can offer right you know um, I mean you know it's 2024 and so on. Or some people will not agree with that and so on. But but we think we think if we can help people right from uh, different countries, people that do, does not have access to maybe right our right uh we can certainly uh, help them right so uh so if you are one of these persons so reach out to us right we can certainly yeah we offer a boot camp in august in person and online right so there's there's a right a summer and winter boot camp so twice per year we offer uh, right but then in august is is in person uh, in Brooklyn at NYU Tandon, and it's a week, but it's a very intense week from nine to five p.m. Right, uh, and again, this one is online. And if you cannot attend this one, again, some people is saying, "Okay, I'm going to watch the recordings." Uh, right, uh, and uh, we if we can help to make, uh, yes. Uh, I've mentioned that there will be their recordings two hours after every class, right? Uh, you'll have access to the all the whole recordings, Zoom recordings, which are high quality, right? Uh, the, the the quality is, is very good. Our again, our instructors have lot a lot of experience in 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 teaching have been teaching these uh, this issue, these topics for for already for already half a decade so to speak right so uh, the august bootcamp yes is is a hybrid in person and online so we have people so in reality you have three types of 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 delegates so to speak in the august bootcamp we have people there which is obviously what we highly recommend Right, we obviously highly recommend to be there to have a conversation with professors, to your colleagues, and so on. You can attend the online lectures streamlined, right? Be able to ask questions. And a third option is that you might not be, you know, available at that time, but you have the recordings, the notebooks, and 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 everything. The the bootcamp is available you know, uh, six months after, but you can download, obviously, you know, after the bootcamp, what I recommend is you download in your computer, right, the, the files, so you have available. Obviously, you cannot distribute, uh, right, these files, but certainly you can, right? And we've never had problems if you're, if you lose them, uh, we're here, right? So if you lose them, uh, we can obviously resend you uh, the lectures you participated, right? So, and obviously all the materials. Piazza is actually available six months, even one year. But I highly recommend that after the bootcamp, uh, you know, one week, I would say two days after the bootcamp, nothing is going to change after that, except that we're going to make exam announcements and so on. But in principle, all the materials should be there and the recordings uh, should be there, right? So you'll have everything, uh, you know, uh, um, and and with, we, we, we haven't had any complaints or issue again, right? So if you if you somehow missing something, you, you reach out to us and, and we'll make this available. Right. Yeah. 
Yeah, so yes, the answer is uh, Bharat is asking. Yeah, so the idea is 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 uh, almost all professors will will and 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 also Nicole is going to show you. We have a data set. We try to solve a problem, right? How we can ingest the data set to feature engineering, right? What are the neural networks that can be suitable for specific problems, so inductive biases and all that kind of stuff? So what can you try if it's a time series problem, it's, it's a factor model problem and so on. So after the bootcamp, you should be able to understand, right? And implement, right? Um, okay. Uh, obviously I'm not saying that, uh, that they're, they're not new problems, right? There, there are many new problems that, that uh, right? But you should, after the bootcamp and and a, and and a studying work, you should be able to understand. Oh, here I, I can use transformers. Here I can use XGBoost. Here's how I use XGBoost. Here's how I use SBMs. I, I scikit learn. I haven't mentioned scikit learn, but obviously we're going to see a lot of scikit learn, right? And, and so on. I'm not obviously. Some people might say, "Oh, this is too ambitious," but I have to say that certainly. You know, certainly models today are are much more, and obviously many models are open sourced, which make our lives much easier in terms of implementing models, right? And uh, how to communicate? We have uh, we have um, the 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 uh, LinkedIn uh, Institute, uh, right? We haven't done a lot of noise with. Uh, I'm obviously obviously available, right? For right, I, I, I'm sure you've seen. I'm, I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. Obviously, our our CMs uh, will also be active in the future. So we we try to have, uh, you know, uh, a dialogue uh, with our uh, you know students from different cohorts, right? And uh, we are obviously in touch with all of them, so to speak, right? And we welcome any remark or 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 or, or uh, collaboration proposal, right? That uh, you might have, uh, you might think about. Okay. Any other question? Yes. Might be, yeah. He teaches his master students, right? But uh, yeah, we can discuss that offline, so to speak, right? Or we try to accommodate for students, uh, right? Professionals, right, and so on, right? Yeah, yeah. Happy to, right? Okay. Anyway, so uh, I think we've covered everything. We 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 have still a few weeks. Right, so you either send us emails on info at aiinfinance.com, you reach out uh, Jeff Jeff Brown or myself on 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 LinkedIn. We're happy to ask uh, to answer all your questions. If you, if we're not answering, please chase us. Right, we'll try to be diligent, and I hope that many of you will be able to join us. Uh, uh, in the 5th of uh, February. I think this is again a very, I think this is a very important moment uh, for finance uh, and, and everybody is reaching out to test, test stuff, revisit the old models, try to improve the old models in, in all the imaginable domains in finance. And obviously LMMs are, right, uh, something that will be, right, uh, you know, replacing possibly ones, possibly, you know, finance professionals. So also there, it's important to, to understand how we can use them and, and how we can treat them. So without, right, any other question? Okay, again, thanks for taking the time to take this session. And, and, and again, right, we, I hope we, you can see us uh, very soon in our bootcamp, either in 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 February or in August, and hopefully in February. Right, the sooner the better. Thank you very much. <laughs>